ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਮੈਂ ਪਵਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਾਈ ਟੀਵੀ ਦੇ ਸਟੂਡੀਓ ਤੋਂ ਅੱਜ ਤਾਂ ਮਾਈ ਸ਼ੋ ਮਾਈ ਲਾਈਫ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਹਾਜ਼ਰਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਨੇ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਹਰਦਿਆਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਹੋਣੀ ਜੋ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਰੈਪਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਵੀਅਰਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਫਤਿਹ ਦੀ ਸਾਂਝ ਪਾਉ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਹਰਦਿਆਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਜੋ ਇੱਕ ਸਿੱਖ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੈ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਅੱਛੀ ਔਰ ਪਿਛਲੇ ਥੋੜੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪੰਥ ਦੀ ਸੇਵਾ ਜੋ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਸ ਤੇ ਚਾਨਣਾ ਪਾਉਣ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਹਰਦਿਆਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਵੀਅਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੱਸੋ ਕਿ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਇਨ 2 ਟੂ 3 ਸੈਂਟੈਂਸਸ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਤੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦੋਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਔਰ ਫਿਰ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਵੀਅਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਦੱਸੋ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਰੋਲ ਉਸ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਇਨ ਸਿੰਪਲ ਟਰਮਸ ਹੀ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਜੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਿੱਖੀ ਦਾ ਮੀਰੀ ਪੀਰੀ ਦਾ ਸਿਧਾਂਤ ਹੈ ਕਨਸੈਪਟ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਪਹਿਰਾ ਦੇਣ ਵਾਲੀ ਨਾਟ ਫਾਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਫਿਟ ਐਨ ਜੀ ਓ ਹੈ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਕਿ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਨੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਦਾ ਡੀ ਪੀ ਆਈ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਦਾ ਮਾਨ ਹੈਗਾ ਔਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਵੇਲੇ 11 ਮੁਲਕਾਂ 'ਚ ਸੇਵਾ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਔਰ ਦੈਟਸ ਵਾਟ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਕਸੈਸ ਵਿਦ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਓਕੇ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਸਿਧਾਂਤ ਆਫ ਸੇਵਾ ਐਂਡ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਨਾਲ ਮਤਲਬ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਕਲੀ ਐਕਟਿਵ ਹੋਣ ਦਾ ਰੋਲ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਲੀਗਲ ਐਸਪੈਕਟਸ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਪਲੱਸ ਜੋ ਸੇਵਾ ਦਾ ਐਸਪੈਕਟ ਹੈਗਾ ਜੋ ਮੇਰੀ ਪੀ ਜੀ ਸਿਧਾਂਤਾਂ ਥੱਲੇ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਲਗਾਤਾਰ ਔਰ 11 ਮੁਲਕਾਂ 'ਚ ਕੰਮ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਵੋਲੰਟੀਅਰ ਜੁੜਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਸੇਵਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਦੇ ਕੰਪਿਊਟਰ ਆਨਲਾਈਨ ਵੈਬਸਾਈਟ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ 6.org ਐਂਡ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਓਵਰ ਦੇਅਰ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਇਨ ਦਿਸ ਐਫਰਟ ਸੋ ਵੈਨ ਐਂਡ ਵੇਅਰ ਵਾਸ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ 6 ਫਾਰਮਡ it was formed in 1997 we started discussing this in new york city okay. uh, studying at that time and uh, there were a few group of uh, engineers and doctors who got together and we thought of you know uh, creating something for the immigrant society immigrant community to reach dc richmond village and that's where it started you know yeah so i would say the united states was rather young when september 11th happened yeah. and the uh, you know new york city came under a terrorist attack that's correct yes. and there has been a lot of uh, misinformed attacks on six uh, cases of misidentity right. um hatred bigotry right how did that inspire you or how did that affect the united six and your mission initially when we started we started with uh, health related projects you know under the humanitarian aid aspect when 911 happened that kind of changed the whole scenario and landscape uh people were not recognizing us they were kind of looking at us and and considering that okay, we look like muslims basically specifically more like the people uh that you watch on television screens like in those days the taliban wearing the ubi turban pande ne te oh shakla dekh ke unu confuse kar rahe si sikha nu unu naal hi you know and uh, uh we also discovered that a large uh, you know number of uh, the american society uh either considered before 9/11 as sheikhs you know they would call us egyptians so it wasn't that you know pehle clear si ye gal but it was something oh like okay they come from the uh, the east and uh, middle east sector and but not much of a problem but they would just walk away but now it was different they, there was hatred in this in the sense that they would identify us with that with with those elements the bad elements in that society over there and uh, you know they would consider uh, thinking of getting rid of us you know so you know they would uh, issue slurs people walking on the street would be you know called Osama bin Laden and other things ha- you know that were happening specifically jede sadi elderly citizenry hagi hai sikhan di california which bay area if they were walking on the street you know they could not probably explain to the people in english as to what's going on they were under attack and uh, not to mention that ke je koi sikh women dastar wali hai she would considered as someone you know jinne chunni kiti hui hai apne sir de utte ki unhe hijab paya hua hai they were so confused about all these things and were treating everybody uh, you know in, in a way where that they were outcasted you know all of a sudden just after one day you know. so uh, it was a big challenge and uh, we realized ki uh, best tarika ida inu hai ga ke assi inu uh, straight away face kariye apne aap instead of rather than running away from it we should empower our sikh youth community tell them you know how to engage the other american, the american community and through multi faith organizations through uh, political outfits in here again uh, think tank groups in american again unna nu engage kita jaye
you know, and we're seeing them on CNN, on 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 uh, other media channels, Fox, and and they're showing them in a different light. But there are some other you know turbans that are doing this kind of positive work. So there was through both projects of ours, we were trying to gauge and trying to manage the situation that was created after 9/11. So there's the theory part, and then there's the practical part. So in theory, you're reaching out to the government agencies, or you're reaching out to other NGOs where we can tell the public about who the six are. Right. You know, our mission is to do Sela, our mission is to do Simran. But from what I could tell, that you guys have you know done the talk, the talk, and walk the walk. So what can you tell us? What happens when a major catastrophe, such as a hurricane or an earthquake or flooding, hits the U.S. mainland? What have you guys done for the mainstream American public that will make them trust the Sikhs, respect the Sikhs, and believe in what we tell them that, yes, we are the good people, and what is our Guru's right. mission? Uh, so what we have done is that we have partnered, first of all, with the Red Cross, with United Way, with uh, the uh, Catholic Charity, it's really a major disaster relief NGOs here. Uh, we have uh, partnered with uh, uh, the other not-for-profit NGOs that specifically deal with FEMA, uh, there's a coalition of these organizations that, and we are a member of those coalitions that are there. And uh, they're called the WADS, which is Voluntary Database of uh, Disaster Relief Organizations. The United States is a member of these WADS in different states. The moment there's a disaster that strikes, so FEMA is the agency that gets alerted first, right? And then, you know, they inform these WADS and we get the emails directly from them. And then, you know, whatever the needs are, specific needs or crisis needs, and then we partner with other NGOs, General Milke, who can provide us, they can provide us. But Sadi Dreefun knows that they are going to be able to do it. So they know that when they come to the community, they know that uh, the Sikh community, they know that they got to go to the United States. And we are there to assist them in this effort, you know. So be it Red Cross, be it Salvation Army, be it the Catholic Charities, uh, be it Islamic Crescent, and the other NGOs that exist. Uh, United States is an equal partner, Sikh partner with them. Uh, and, and working and, and making sure that we're able to help the people. Also, uh, you know, with Guru's Grace, I can say now that we have a good team of volunteers that within 48 hours, we can deploy uh, a Sikh contingent uh, task force that can provide aid in any part of the United States today. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 9th week, 9th July 2018, jo Washington DC de vich program karan jareo, bachyanda ek summit karan jareo, show to pehla to si dasya si minu thoda jya, ke United States di ek academy hai, jithe jada Sikh youth hai, ole anda janda hai, unanu training titi jandi hai, ke apa kiving apni community di service kar saak dein, jithe we are serving the Sikh community as well as the majority of humanity as well. Right. What can you tell us about that in both English and Punjabi? So uh, we have a uh, academy, it's called as the Advanced uh, Humani uh, Advocacy Humanitarian uh, Academy. What it does basically is it deals with both, with both advocacy issues and humanitarian aid issues and trains the youth in the United States and coming from neighboring countries about all the issues that, are, uh, that can help to um, engage our youth in, uh, in policy making issues and also in, uh, you know, while working during disasters what are the things that they have to keep in mind and how they have to be trained and be prepared for that. So uh, this is a, a five uh, day course and uh, what we do is uh, we, uh, we, people who come from different parts of the United States and other areas, they, they go through a whole session you know, of different courses. We invite the ACLU, hence the uh, folks from the uh, Civil Rights Division in the United States. Uh, we, call, we call people from State Department, from the US SURF and, and, and combination of different uh, agencies you know, who come in and speak uh, we also visit the FBI's office over here. Uh, they show that, you know, uh, how the FBI was created, formed, what was the need for that. And we also, you know, uh, talk to them about Gurmat, you know, in other words, about Sikh history. We combine that and tell them that what are the issues that are impacting the Sikh community globally, you know? So what are the major burning issues that are in challenges that are in front of us? I mean, it's, it's, it's good that, you know, we understand uh, we, we're doing our normal chores of life, etc. but the youth that is that is the next generation for us that is going to carry the Sikh mantle for all of us going forward. They're the future leaders. They need to know what our problems are. So one one big concern that you know we all had was that history is getting repeated again and again, and we don't have any documentation that helps us to learn from our past lessons. 
and experiences so that the mistakes don't get repeated again. So it's important in this over here, we try to capture all these factors, you know, and, and present to the kids. And then we also make sure that we are in touch with them later on and they become part of the Yadis 16 going forward, helping them in different projects, you know. So we're here for five days in Washington, D.C. and uh, part of the academy and the, the students who pass this academy actually become junior advocates. You know. So you mentioned the Sikh youth. Where are these kids coming from? Uh, what is their background? Are they high school kids? What age group are they? Yeah, these kids are mostly uh, college going kids, you know, or who are some of them have passed the college. Uh, but we have an average uh, age of 16 plus and above, you know, who are here as a part of the team. We have youngsters coming in from Ohio, from uh, Tracy, California, from Bay Area in California, from Atlanta, from uh, uh, New York, New Jersey, uh, and numerous other states, you know. So, um, and these kids are very passionate. They want to make a change. They want to understand lawmaking, policy making, and how to um, address the challenges that exist within the community today. So, and also if tomorrow is a disaster, what role they can play. So these people will be trained in all in both aspects of MIRI, PD, both the humanitarian aspect and the legal aspect. So it's a combined uh, course that actually uh, they will uh, undergo and also hear from uh, com not only community leaders, but also from lawmakers uh, on, from the Hill and from uh, NGOs like uh, NAACP, uh, ACLU, and others who've already made that marker from ADL, Anti-Defamation League, you know, so we can, they can share their experiences that what their community, the Jewish community, the black African-American community, the, uh, uh, the, the other Hispanic community that exists, right, their leaders, what they, changes that they underwent and how they went to the hill to make uh, themselves acceptable in terms of, you know, all the lawmaking that is taking, happening today, they become a part and parcel and to be a, as a considered persons in that segment, you know. Same way, we're taking those lessons, going to the hill and making sure that six become our part of every decision that takes place and we have the right to participate and we are aware about them and we take experienced decisions over there, you know, and uh, which, are, which are for the better of the betterment of the community. Well, the organization The reason we are so successful because client trust us. I've been doing this my whole life. My team is my wife, my office manager and my agents. We look forward to own your business and we do speak your language. Thank you.
After two decades of successful live Bollywood shows, Vijay Taneja of Elite Bollywood Entertainment presents to you the biggest Bollywood show of 2018. Tonight, The Bang, the tour reloaded. The Bang team is here tonight in Washington, D.C. I, Vijay Taneja, would like to say a special thanks to all of you for attending this concert and making this evening even more beautiful. God, you the lovely audience, my family, which has always been on my side, by Palka, Dr. Neha, Reema Mahima, Dinesh Patel, Rocky Patel, Capital Post team, GTV Neelima Mehra, Morning Gill and Kuldeep Gill, and entire media who helped in getting the message out. AG team, Ashur Gulab, team of Velocity Commercial Investments, Shubham Nayak, supporters, Mr. Omkar Sharma, Sharma Law Group, Chartered, 301-593-1983, Hotel Services Consultants, LLC, and Brokerage Services, Michelle David, 240-393-5135, and many, many more people to thank. This successful show belongs to all of us. मिले दिल में था दर्द करारा अपने बाप का बदला लेने के लिए आया हूँ नहीं नहीं मैं नहीं दूंगा लोग बदला ले जाते हैं Welcome back to the show. Now we have here some wonderful souls with us um, who have decided to, uh, you know, donate their time, their personal time, uh, to come to Washington D.C. for five days in order to make a difference in the community, both in the Sikh community and the mainstream American community at the same time. So here we are. We're going to go ahead and start from my right, and we will be introducing these wonderful folks to you viewers. Uh, so that's how I pronounce the so. Where you're from, what you're doing, um, and why you're here. Uh, my name is Gurdaj Singh. I'm from Roswell, Georgia, and I graduated high school, and I'm going to be studying business, and I'm here just to learn about policy making, and yeah. Wonderful. Where would you be going to college? I'm going to be going to I'm going to be going to Georgia State in the fall. Good deal. All right. Up to you now. Hi, my name is Manjot Singh. Um, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm currently a sophomore at Suffolk University. So the main thing that brought me here was that I wanted to better connect with my Sikh roots. And also, I'm, I'll, I'll be traveling to Israel this summer to better understand the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And because United Sikhs works a lot um, around foreign policy, I wanted to better understand how foreign policy is targeted towards minorities, and that's especially pertinent to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict as the Palestinians are seen as minorities. So Manjot Singh, what are you studying over at uh, your, your university? I'm studying international relations. Oh, nice. So it's so fitting. Yeah. All right, and you? My name's Sukhmani Kaur. I'm from Akron, Ohio, and I'll be attending University of Pennsylvania next year as a freshman. And what would you be studying, or are you undeclared right now? So I'll be in the Vigelis MLS program, um, looking at a major in neuroscience and biochemistry with a minor in economics. Nice. And yourself? 
Um, my name is Ignore Carr. I just graduated from John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Okay. I live in New York City. Okay. And uh, I plan on going to law school in a couple of months. So you're already done with your undergrad? Yes, I just got my bachelor's uh, in May. Oh, June. okay. Nice. So, well, now that we are introduced, uh, so you guys are here for the five-day summit. What brings you here? What was, let's say that, you know, everybody has a reason to be somewhere. Yeah. Uh, is there a certain policy? Is there something going on in the community right now that you would like to address? Um, I just wanted to learn more about how the lawmaking process works and like uh, how to educate other people more on the Sikhi ideas. Okay. And culturally involved Sikhs. Ideas. Okay. Uh, All right. So you want the Sikhs to be from to come to the mainstream American community from the fringes. Yeah. So we're not just this unknown element. Yeah. You know, we are in, involved in the process. So we are Sikhs as well as Americans at the same time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, what is one thing that you could tell our viewers that you would like to see done differently in the Sikh community? Well, a lot of times we're confused with uh, Muslims, but that we would, I would like to change that perception right. and like we're not the same. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Well, that's, that's what you expect from the American community, yeah. uh, for them to understand better who the Sikhs are. Yeah. But what can you tell our Sikh community? How can we address the problem differently? Or is there a different issue that we should be addressing? Um, I would say, like, don't, like, hide. Just approach people. Don't, like, back off. Okay. And, like, just treat everyone friendly. And, I don't know. All yeah. right. So be true to the Guru's message. You know, do the seva. When Guru says do seva, you know, we're not only supposed to serve the six or those who look alike us. We're supposed to be serving the whole of humanity. Yes. All right. Well, good deal. All right. And what can you tell us, Manjot Singh? Uh, um, what brings you here? You know, what is one thing that you would like to see differently being done in the community? Well, I think, again, like Gurdjieff said, like, I guess we can all work together, like, in more unity. And, like, like whatever the Gurbani says, like, we, we should follow that, like, we shouldn't let internal divides like cast and I know we were having a discussion in the car on our way here about that like how there can always be like caste issues that separate six and like miscommunication so I think that's very important where we stay unified because like to somebody who's targeting us like we're we all just look like one person or like part of one group and if, if we allow like internal divisions just to divide us like we can't fight the external you know hate coming at us right well uh you know that's when pasha said manas ki jat sabaik pehchan bo that pretty much summarizes what you just said that you know we all are you know children of one father god and then we all should treat each other with respect and equality. Yeah. So it's wonderful that you brought the idea, or at least, um, you know, a sin, I, I call it a sin, the caste system. Uh, it's really wonderful that you all are thinking, because that is what takes us back to the basics from Gurnatic Bhatsa's time, because at that time, what was going on in South Asia was pretty sad. Even in today, actually, what is going on in South Asia is pretty sad, that people are divided into different castes. And Sikhi is totally against it, right? Yeah. So wouldn't you agree that you cannot be a Sikh and believe in caste system at the same time? Yes. Right? I would say that you could agree with that, right? Yeah. Because if you do believe in the caste system, that means you're not a Sikh. You're just another follower of the Brahmin. Yeah, exactly. And just to add on to that, like, there's applications that go beyond just, like, like uniting within the Sikh community too because like once you're united within the Sikh community you can like bring your knowledge and like your advocacy just like beyond like your own community like inter interfaith dialogue between Muslims and Sikhs because we're both you know targeted by Islamophobia and it would be really good for us like as Americans to have interfaith discussions. Right and that that is what Gurnatik Pasha did with his four Udasis you know he went to the east then he went to the Middle East. He also went to West. Mm -hmm. uh, great. So, Muni, what can you tell us? What brings you here? So, I'm here because I want to help increase the platform for Sikhs, especially in schools where 
many Sikhs are bullied for either like boys who wear a parka or a turban or girls who have facial hair. As we saw uh, recently, a few years ago on Reddit, Balpreet Kaur, she had facial hair and she was discriminated, she was made fun of there. I've personally been a victim of a bullying at school, in middle school, when I was in gym class, someone said, you have disgustingly hairy legs because as a Sikh, we keep all forms of hair. So I want to help other Sikhs like me who went through the same problems. Well, I, I cannot thank you enough for mentioning that because you are here giving voice to you know hundreds of thousands of Sikh girls who are out there who want to express themselves, who want to stay true to the guru, and yet you know being uh, be a fully participant American at the same time. And I truly, truly do appreciate what you just said from the bottom of my heart because I have been a victim of bullying as well. But you know you don't give up, right? Yeah. You, you fight back. You fight back, and following the proper avenue, we don't have to fight a physical fight but we can redress it the, pro the proper way. Because if right now here you are advocating this, and then you got, uh, because you're giving voice to those who cannot speak for themselves. So I truly, truly do appreciate that you're mentioning this in our studio here at my TV, and it's just wonderful. And uh, Iknurkar, what brings you here? What are your expectations? What do you expect to learn from this five day summit? Um, likewise, just um, learn about lawmaking. And uh, since I currently work in an immigration law firm and there's many immigration disputes that are going on, um, I want to voice a little bit about that because I've dealt one-on-one -on -one with these individuals and I know, um, you know how hard it is for them to deal with the daily life situations that they're facing, the fear of ICE coming to their door, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's, uh, it's great that uh, you know, it's a coincidence that you're here talking about the immigration and that's the field that you want to pursue yes. your career in. At the same time, what's going on nationally is the separation exactly. of uh, children from their, you know, parents. How has that affected you? Um, I have actually dealt with families um, that crossed the border, and you know, they they shared their experiences of how hard it was to make it to America. Right. So it's really sad and unfortunate to see that you know Americans are actually separating the family at the border. You know? Now. And is it only the current administration, or was it happening actually, even during the Obama administration? It, had, it was going on before. Oh, okay. But, yes, but it, it was just never publicized. It was never publicized, exactly. Wow, so the separation of families has been going on. Yes. And how long do you think this, um, uh, this policy has been in effect for? I believe it's been since the late 90s. I'm not since late 90s? Sure. Yes, I'm not 100% sure. So then it has been continued from the Bill Clinton. It's been Clinton's. continued, yes. Oh wow! See, that's time. what the mainstream, uh, you know, American media does not mention that this is not just Trump's policy, but this has been exactly. in effect it just, it for just the last decade or two. Um, ever since President Trump became. You know, yeah, like, but also know. his rhetoric, like, is very like Islamophobic, anti-immigration. Yeah, exactly. Sort of like and wraps up the, kind of the negative on. emotions and like exactly. you know, like it just makes people. And um, I can remember when President. Um, Trump, you know, was into power when he was inaugurated. Uh, there was a lot of immigrants that were afraid because I live in a community where we're full of immigrants. Right. So, and they're all Sikhs. So, uh, you know, I um, went into office Monday morning and I was receiving calls and they were saying, you know, should we send our kids to school? Like, will ICE come to the schools, pick up the kids? Will, um, you know, is it safe for me to take the train? Because I live in New York City, right? So they're like, uh, they would ask us, you know, I used to take are they going to arrest us? Like, that's how afraid these people were because they did not know about their rights. Doesn't and that just melt your heart? It does. Um, actually, that's the message I wanted to give to our Sikhs that we should educate ourselves about our rights because it's very important to know right. about our rights, you know, and just educate, um, e like, each other. Or educate ourselves about our religion because there's just so much in our religion that our gurus have taught us. Right. And so. there's so much that's similar to other religions. Like you can see similarities in Christianity exactly. or Islam. And if everyone starts learning about Sikhi and seeing the like unity around and the connectedness, then we could actually try to have like And a I think that's what we really need world. to do. We do need to overlook our differences. Yeah. And focus on similarities. Because isn't that what we do in our, with our family members anyways? Exactly. Because we don't like everything that they do, right? But we still, we love them. 
and we overlook the differences. And I think that's what we need to see among the Sikh community and among the you know, mainstream American community, and that's what we need to see at the global level as well. Mm -hmm. Since you're outnumbered, we have three males versus one male. We would like to hear more from your side of the story. Um, Is there any one uh, you know current um, policy that you would like to be changed, or what would you like to be brought into in, into the abyss? Uh, I'm, I'm not very uh, politically motivated, I guess. Um, well. Well, while you think on that, we're going to come back to you. We're going to go to someone who is actually majoring in a field related to politics. <laughs> and back to you, Manjot Kasing. What can you tell us? What is one thing that you would like to, be see, uh, that you would like to see changed um, at the national level in the U.S.? What is one policy? Well, I think we need to have more of the perspectives of people of color advocated at the national level. And going back to, like, unification, it's very important that like we organize, like we can have our own women of color groups, like with black women, Latino women, Asian women, Middle Eastern women, and just come together and discuss our issues because our issues are actually very similar. Like for example, black women and like let's say brown women, we both deal with issues of colorism where lighter skin is preferred in our communities. And so if we talk about these things and advocate them on the na national level, maybe people will understand that you know, the demographics are also changing. Um, there's more people of co color coming here. There's going to be a lot more biracial babies or multiracial babies being born. And it's just so important for people to better understand people of color. Well, when you say that, you know, the lighter skin color is uh, preferred, we do understand that, you know, racism based on skin color is one thing. But we were talking about bullying and not understanding Sikhi. Um, don't you think discrimination happens from all parties? Isn't yeah. it just lack of information about the other party? Yeah. Because it's yeah. not always just white Americans discriminating against yes. all others. And right? that's why we need to come together, I think, to right. discuss like organizing together. So like we sort of have different perspectives and because it's like like a social sort of ladder about like where some people are on the bottom and some on top, like we can discuss like you know, what some of us do have and what some of us don't and like better understand each other's perspectives, you know. Right. So we, we need to have more communication mm -hmm. and we need to, you know, work on policies that will create equal opportunity. Yes. And right? I think that would work better than like, let's say just having like one, for example, like Indian female legislator, like, but if we actually organize like more like you know, multicultural or, and interfaith organization, like that would really increase like the advocacy on the national level because let's say if like this Indian female uh, legislator, she probably doesn't have like all the knowledge of like, or like the perspectives, like she doesn't know them and she like- they, Right, and I, and I totally agree with that. And that's what the guru tells us too, that we're not just to focus on the physical aspect. It's also about, you know, what goes on in our minds, whether we're in tune with the guru or not. Because, you know, it's like some, having somebody from caste system, I'm going to go back to, you know, to the caste system. And, you know, a lot of times they have done these reservations, sort of called, uh, what we call here is affirmative action, but that mm -hmm. does not always help societies at a larger scale. You might pick, you know, one or two people from a certain community, but that's not helping the majority of the yeah. community. You know, their poverty is not alleviated. So, well, I do want to thank you all for coming out here. Uh, for showing us, you know, uh, for sharing your uh, beautiful ideas, uh, for sharing your time with us. And with that, I would like to go ahead and invite the next group of uh, children with us. And with that, Wahiguji ka khalsa, Wahiguji ki fateh.
से मिले दिल में था दर्द करारा मैं अपने बाप का बदला लेने के लिए आया हूँ नहीं नहीं मैं नहीं दूंगा लोग बदला ले जाते हैं बाप को वापस नहीं करते Welcome back to the show, viewers. We're here with our next group of uh, a wonderful mix of volunteers and uh, student attendees to attend the Five Days Summit hosted by United Sex here in Washington, D.C. We're going to go ahead and start from my left with introductions. Will you please go ahead and tell us about yourself and why you're here and what you expect to learn from this? All right. Uh, my name is Kalan Deep Singh. I'm from Hayward, California. I'm actually a volunteer with United Six. I've been a volunteer for about nine or eight years. I've been doing this since I was a freshman in high school. Uh, we initially started by serving the homeless at a Glade Memorial Church in San Francisco oh, okay. in the Bay Area. Um, and then after that, uh, in college, I was an attendee of the academy as well uh, a couple of years back. So this is my third year back for the academy. Uh, the previous two, I've been a volunteer helping them run and manage okay. the academy. So my first few years in the academy uh, basically gave me a lot of knowledge about what I can expect uh, you know, in the future, uh, given uh, I had no idea what I was doing with 
with college and gave me a better direction of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to pursue. All right, wonderful. And uh, how about you? Very good, Rico Kalsa. Very good, Tiki Tate. My name is Kathleen Kaur. I am 19 years old and I'm from New York. Um, I've been working with United Six, like volunteering and everything, for a while now. I I think since like middle school and stuff, we did, we started off with interfaiths and um, homeless shelter feedings. So we'd go and do kirtan with like a bunch of um, people from other faiths and we'd learn about theirs and like we'd basically do sikhi prachar. And um, yeah, I've been doing that since. I This is my second time back at the academy. I learned a lot the first time and like that was before I was in college. So it gave me, again, like Karan said, um, it gave him an idea and it gave me an idea as well of like what I want to do in the future and now this is my second time back just to kind of reaffirm myself and now I'm thinking about going to law school so okay. is it Sat or Sat? Sat. Sat with a T? Yes. Sat Lean Corp. Okay so right now you're currently an undergrad student? Yes. Oh okay where do you go to college? Queens College in oh, New okay. York. And what are you studying? Um, as of right now I'm still deciding between business majors but oh, I don't know okay. yet. All right wonderful and to our next member my name is Tanveen Kaur. I've come all the way from London to the Advocacy Academy and I'm really looking forward to this week. I think we're all going to learn quite a lot from each other and we've already built really good relationships and we're only on the first day so who knows what it's going to be like by the end of the week. Um, I've been volunteering for United Six for about eight or nine months now and I've tended to do a little bit of everything, whatever needs to be done. I've dealt with discrimination cases and hate crime cases. I've also travelled quite a lot for United Seek. So I went to see the Sangat in um, Italy and Portugal. And um, I also made a trip to Brussels a couple of weeks ago. And now I'm in the USA for the Advocacy Academy. Well, well welcome to the US. Would you please go ahead and tell us your name one more time? Yeah, it's Tanveen Kaur. T-A-N-V-E-E-N. -E -E Tanveen right. Kaur. Yep. OK, what a unique name. Um, have you volunteered for the summit? Uh, for United Six here before? Uh, not for the summit, no, this is my first time. This is your first time. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting to learn from here? Um, well, I want to improve my technical advocacy skills and learn how to network and approach the right types of people so that our lobbying and advocacy is as effective as possible. Um, and, and also learn more about the rest of the team so that we can work together more effectively. Oh, wonderful. And uh, last but not least, sir, with you. My name is Josh Deep Singh. I'm from Tracy, California. I'm 17 years old. Um, and this is my first United Seeks event, actually, and therefore my first time at this summit in this academy. And this is an opportunity that people like me and my age never are afforded. And I'm just blessed to have this opportunity to come here to the Capitol at Washington, D.C. Right. and be part of you know, this experience. And I'm hoping to learn how the democratic process plays at Capitol Hill especially, and talking with various senators or congressmen to create some conversation of change in a dialogue that includes the sick consciousness in America today. Right. And talking with these high officials and government will enhance my ability to speak and, and also maybe amplify my skills and how I can help communicate and build alliances with my commu community and my hometown and maybe create change there. Wonderful. Well, it is a, you know, you're quite a, a breath of fresh air, so to speak, that you're at the age of 17, have already understood the importance of politics and importance of lawmaking and how we can leverage that power to help our Sikh community. Now, with that, I would like to go ahead and explore more on that. What is one policy that you think is the most important? Well, I know, you know, being part of the American community, all policies are of importance, otherwise they would not be discussed. But one is, what is one important policy that is so critical to your heart that you think would help us the most as a Sikh community? One policy that I believe is pr uh, needed and critical, especially to the Sikh identity and consciousness in America, especially in California, because this is something that we're dealing with there, is the spread and the awareness of Punjabi because the Punjabi is our mother tongue, it's right. our root, and that is where our Gurmukhi spirit emerges, and that is where we're able to communicate and talk with each other. And we're trying to make, especially in California, it's a bill called AB 3179, where we're trying to make Punjabi the third official language as it's one of the most spoken languages in California. 
Hopefully no, that's just an essential thing. Because I know as a country we do not have an official language, although English is, uh, you know, spoken by the majority of the public, but we do not have an official language. Does California have official languages? Uh, I know they have English and Spanish as one of the official languages. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, wonderful. And, well, you're here all the way across the, um, from the other side of the pond. Uh, how do you go back to England from what you're going to learn in Washington, D.C.? Uh, how do you expect to take these skill, skills back to England and apply that to our community? Well, I think these skills will be applicable in terms of the global advocacy that I tend to get involved with. I do help our international chapters. Um, and so I think that the skills are transferable in terms of um, how I'll be able to apply them regardless of the country with which we're dealing. Right. Well, with that, you know, we all are here because we're concerned citizens. We're, we're concerned, uh, you know, Americans, we're concerned English folks who want to serve humanity, who want to serve, uh, you know, the Sikh, general Sikh population. With that comes security. You know, it is really sad just this past week that, you know, a number of Sikhs were killed by a, a, a suicide attack in Afghanistan. You know, there have been knife attacks all over the globe against Sikhs because a lot of folks, especially in the Western world, they do not understand us. They misunderstand. Whereas there are folks who, who kill us because they don't really know about Sikhs. And then there are folks who kill us because they know we are Sikhs. You know, what's the message? With that in mind, what is the number one threat to, uh, you know, the Sikh population? Well, I believe um, the lack of knowledge and information that's out there. I think upon, it's upon us, the youth, to communicate that message because a lot of us here are first and second generation of uh, immigrants. Uh, and, you know, uh, my parents, you know, I'm a first generation, so my parents did not have the luxury to go out and spread the message of Sikhi because they were too busy working and affording us the possibility to come out here to gain the knowledge and then to spread it. So I believe it's upon us to spread the knowledge because the lack of, the lack of knowledge basically drives hatred. Right. If I don't know, then then it's it's going to push me to do something. So it's upon us, the youth, I think, to spread knowledge because without knowledge, like I said, knowledge is power. Right. So we empower people with our knowledge. Right. We do have the knowledge which is given to us by the guru. Right. I'm going to go ahead and you know spill the beans. What do you guys think of the caste system? Because that's what really started this fight, right? Against class system, against humans not treating other humans with dignity. What do you think of that? So, I mean, in New York, it is a relatively prominent thing. As oh, wow. Even like, in the Sikh community, huh? Yeah. That, like, it's not... The people who know about it tend to not accept it, but, like, there's a whole thing where, like, Jack is Jack or, like, right. whatever. And, you know, it's just... Or Lubana and this and that. And it's just... It's so, like... It's such a dividing mentality, and it's such a wrong way to think. Like, at the end of the day, I see Guru and the Sikha. Like, right. That's all that matters. Guru Gobind Singh is our father. It doesn't matter where we came from. It doesn't matter, like, you know, it. all that matters is that Guru Gobind Singh is our father. We bow down to Guru Granth Sahib Ji, and we believe in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. All that stuff, at the end of the day, like, the whole point is to not be divided like that. The whole point is, like, of Sikhi especially, is to become one with Vaidu. And it's so important that, like, you know, we don't get distracted by silly things like that. And it's even being, like, you know, raised even more um, in society by music, by the current culture. And it's right. just, it, it conflicts. Like, there's a difference between culture and religion, and we need to find that divide and keep it separate. We can't mix them both. Right. And it's very heartwarming when we have, you know, young adults coming together, and at least, if nothing else, at least recognizing that there is a problem. You know, yeah. like I say this all the time, you cannot be a sick and believe in caste system at the same time, exactly. you know. And like we were talking about the threats, Brahmanism has always been at war with Sikhi because we against we spoke against the Brahmin, you know. We we got them. We we sort of took their you know their um, their earnest living. I, I don't really call it earnest living, but their livelihoods away from them, you know, because they were fooling people, simple-minded, simple folks, you know, and. Uh, when Guru Nanak Pasha came along, he said, you know, everybody's equal, you know. And that sort of did not sit well with the Brahmins. So we have been at war with the Brahmins, just you know, what you learn about anti-Sikh massacres that have taken place you know, within the boundaries of India. What do you have to put to that? I think it comes back to the, the basic message of Sikhi and, in fact, what's printed on our T-shirts, recognize the human race as one. Right. You know, and, and that means um, looking at our own minds, as Gurbani teaches us to do, 
and waking up and raising our own level of consciousness so that we are able to combat these things inside us and then make a change in the rest of the world. That, that's my interpretation of it. Um, but I, I think that until we're able to look at ourselves as individuals and as a punk, you know, things aren't going to change unless we really look deeply and truthfully at, at what we've been doing up until now. Right. Because sometimes it does, you know, we, we have to go back to the basics mm -hmm. uh, from, from the times when Sikhi was taking place. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. But before we wrap up the show, I would like to go ahead and ask each one of you one thing that you would like to expect uh, from your Sikh community that you would like to see them do differently than what they have been doing. What is one thing that you would uh, like to say uh, to the Sikh community living in Tracy or Bay Area or California? What can you tell them? I would say that now is the time to maneuver the Sikh identity into the American fold, where now we need to invest in the character of the youth rather than building Gurdwari or just being swamped in the trivialities of you know Gurdwara fights or just simple caste, this caste contempt, caste hate right. that divides us and the mentality right. that almost divides us and breaks the unification that the essentially the Guru's philosophy just tells us without caste, without creed, and no status should hold us apart together and rather we should be some one unified vision under God's light. It's wonderful that you're mentioning that we need to focus on the message that comes out of the Gurdwara and not so much the building itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, how about over to uh, the European Sikh community or the Sikh community living in London because I know uh, there, there have been Sikhs who are like third or fourth generation Sikhs in England because Sikhs have, have migrated to England, you know, uh, far earlier than to North America. What can you tell those folks? I think, yeah, we're, we're a fairly established community in, in the UK. And I would like to see the, the global punk, not just the, the UK punk, coming together so that we can tackle the issues that we were created to tackle. Um, you know, we're wasting our energies fighting each other when we could be directing it, serving humanity, which is what as Sikhs, I believe that we're here to do. Wonderful. And up to you next. So I think I would ask like specifically New York Sangat or tri-state area that, you know, we, this is most of us that come there a lot of the times tend to be first generation and us, at least my generation of kids from um, freshly college, our parents worked so, so hard to be able to give us the opportunities to go to college, to be able to study, to do more. And it's so important that we use those opportunities to educate ourselves, not, you know, lose ourselves in drugs and alcohol and just cast fights whatever and like just disassociate ourselves ourselves from good thought it's important that we bring ourselves back to good I always say oh we are the ones that have to put our foot in you can't make change from the outside you have to be inside to be able to make the change so I'm really like urging us all to take a step inside become part of your good thought communities tell your parents at least get a voice through your parents do something be a part of it. Start a youth group. Anything is possible. There's a lot of us. Well, I got the young people who are happy that the youth 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 are जो ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਪਹਿਲੀਆਂ ਪੀੜ੍ਹੀਆਂ ਕਰ ਗਈਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਦਾ ਐਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਕਰੀਏ ਪਰ ਜੋ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਸਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਕਮੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਜੋ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਪੂਰੀ ਕਰਨੀ ਹੈ ਵਿਦ ਦੈਟ ਸਰ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਲਾਸਟ ਵਾਟ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਸੇ ਵੈਲ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੀਟੀ ਓਬਵੀਅਸ ਓਵਰ ਦ ਪਾਸਟ ਫਿਊ ਮੰਥਸ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਹੈਜ਼ ਗੋਨ ਥਰੂ ਅ ਸੀਵੀਅਰ ਡਰਗ ਓਵਰਡੋਸ ਰਾਈਟ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਥੈਟ ਨੀਡਸ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਅਡਰੈਸ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਆਪਣੀਆਂ ਜੜਾਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਲੱਗ ਚੁੱਕੀਆਂ ਰਾਈਟ ਵੀ ਬੀਨ ਹੀਅਰ ਫੋਰ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਅ ਸੈਂਚਰੀ ਨਾ ਰਾਈਟ ਵੀ ਵੀ ਐਸਟੈਬਲਿਸ਼ਡ ਆਰ ਆਈਡੈਂਟੀਟੀ Right. But then again, at the end of the day, we're forgetting our roots. Right. Like you said, Brahmanwad has had a big impact on our religion. Right. Whether it may be the various Kandukaras. Right. The most recent one in 1984. And the yep. one following after that, which eradicated the youth by uh, the state specifically targeting the Sikh identity. Right. Following that, we have the drug epidemic. Absolutely. Which is, uh, it's, which is killing a generation that has been stripped of their fathers, brothers, mothers, sisters. that vulnerable youth needs to be addressed. I believe we it depends upon us because we have these uh we have these royalties that allow us to reach out lend them a hand. Right. Whether it may be education, rehab centers or just simply 
advocating for a better Punjab. Right. Because no matter what, at the end of the day, we are related to Punjab. Absolutely. We might be settled here, but then again, our parents are from Punjab. Right. Not only that, hey, it's Punjab, but it's a link of communication with our parents. Right. Because if we dis discuss Punjab, that creates dialogue with our parents. Absolutely. So Not just the parents, and also that Akal Takh Sahib is physically present within Punjab. Yes. So we really need to uh, you know, address that problem that Punjabis and Punjab need to be strong. Right, exactly. And uh, with Akal Takh, uh, many of you know what changes has gone through Absolutely. after 1984. So, right. but Punjab will see, Punjab will be the one who is in the middle of the day. And we will join the hands of not just California Sangat, like Ben, he said, uh, Global Sangat, Sangat, yeah. Global Worldwide Sangat. Let's join hands. So ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਸਾਡੇ ਲਈ ਜਾਣਨੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਕੱਲੂ ਘਰੇ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਦੀ ਵਾਰ ਛੜਾਈ ਜੋ ਹਾਕਮਾਂ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਉਹਨੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਪਿਓ ਤੇ ਭਰਾ ਮਾਰੇ ਪੁੱਤਰ ਮਾਰੇ ਬਟ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਡਰਗ ਐਪੀਡੈਮਿਕ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਡੇਂਜਰਸ ਹੈ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਨਾਊ ਆਰ ਸਿਸਟਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਆ ਮਦਰਸ ਆਰ ਹੁਕਡ ਔਨ ਟੂ ਥੋਸ ਡਰਗਸ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਵਨ ਇਜ਼ ਈਵਨ ਮੋਰ ਡੇਂਜਰਸ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਰੀਅਲੀ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਕਮ ਟੁਗੇਦਰ ਟੇਕ ਅ ਫਰੈਸ਼ ਪਰਸਪੈਕਟਿਵ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਟੇਕ ਅਨਦਰ ਡੀਪ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਇਟ ਐਂਡ ਲੈਟਸ ਗੋ ਹੈਡ ਐਂਡ ਸੋਲਵ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਵਿਦ ਥੈਟ we would like to go and wrap up today's show thank you for watching my show my life here from my tv wahiguruji ka khalsa wahiguruji ki fateh